Hey everybody, so this is Dustin Aronchik. He is a PhD candidate here at AUT and also a level two ISAC. Can you tell them what that means? So ISAC is the International Society for the Advancement of Kin Anthropometry. So it's just a big, long way of um, talking about the society that tries to standardize body composition and anthropometric measurements uh, internationally. So it's, uh, as far as I know, it's the only one that like reaches basically everywhere, although it seems to be you know, biggest in, in South America, North America, and, and Oceania right now. Um, but essentially it just means that when we put research out there or we're, we're putting out numbers and people know why, where it comes from. So we're not using different formulas from other people or different measurement sites or anything like that and kind of compare um, apples to apples and, and make sure that everybody is trained sufficiently. Right, and at, at level two you have to have a certain uh, ability to do different measurements and also have your technical error of measurement be quite tight. Uh, and I think that's a good segue to uh, why skin folds probably get an overly bad rap and how actually valuable they can be, just if you look at them in a certain way. So could you tell us a little more about that? Sure, so as Eric mentioned, um, if people just happen to buy uh, a pair of skin fold calipers and, and some measuring tapes and things like that and go out and use it on their clients, um, they might be really, really good and reliable and accurate, and they might not be, they don't really know. Um, so when the Isaac runs their courses, then you end up practicing a lot, and at the end you compare your numbers with somebody who's been doing it for a very long time. And then after the course, you have to go out and take, uh, depending on the level, somewhere between you know 20 and 20 plus uh, profiles on a bunch of different people, and check your numbers uh, intra and intra session uh, to make sure that you're not getting skewed one way or the other. And once you pass that, then you also know what your technical error measure is. So that if I'm testing Eric, for example, week to week, and we might see no change, but it's be, it's within my, my error. So we don't know, or at that point, we're not sure if he hasn't made any progress or if it's due to my error that we're not seeing progress. And of course, the tighter that is, the clearer it becomes if he's making progress or not. And uh, why is the error so much bigger when you're looking at a body fat percentage versus what we look at which is the sum of the eight skin fold measurements that we that, that he took. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of factors in that. Um, probably one of the bigger downsides of reporting stuff and saying I'm 7% or I'm 3% is that there's a bunch of different formulas out there. So if people go online and they type their, their measurements into whatever software, as I already mentioned, they don't really know if the skin folds are accurate. And second of all, if you put the exact same numbers into two different softwares, one's going to come out at seven, one's going to come out at six, one will come out at 12. Um, so somebody talks about how they're 5% body fat, but they don't really look that good. Um, you know, they're just probably using a different formula. Yeah, and, and just to show you how wide that variance can be for my masters, I did a study on uh, different protein intakes, and it was a crossover study looking at the same individuals changing over time. And their baseline metric uh, with three different formulas that are reported was either 15% mean body fat percentage, 10% or 20%. So it was basically 15 plus or minus 5%. Um, however, when you look at the actual skin folds for each person, because at the time I had uh, Ruth Nadu, who's another researcher who came out of uh, Sprints, she's also a level two ISAC, and she had extremely tight numbers, you know, less than a millimeter on average at each, each skin fold site. So you can get a really, really tight metric uh, when you're looking at skin folds themselves. And when you think about it, for a bodybuilder, this is only one step removed from what I visually look like. It's telling me directly how much tissue is in the way of seeing my muscle, uh, while a body fat percentage uh, is, is making estimations based on new, multiple metrics. So thank you very much for taking the time to explain that. And 3DMJers, I will see you next time.